Hello everybody and welcome to a video on Groundbreakers. This is a tactical turn based game with a focus on robots. So uh, let's have a look and see what this game is like. Um, I've actually played you through the tutorial already. It's about a series of about five or just seven missions, something like that. Um, just teaching some of the basics of the game. Um, so you've also got a scenario mode, a campaign mode, infinity mine and multiplayer mode. Uh, down the bottom here we've got some options where you can change the volume for sound and background music. I've turned off the music for this video. Uh, you've also got options to change resolution and graphic sentence. Um, on the right over here then you've got um, units and lab. And this mart is not enabled so I'm not sure what that is. Um, but in units if you click on that we can see the uh, different units uh, that you've collected that you can play and use in your battles. So I haven't actually tried this guy, I just unlocked him. Um, the cannon here, he's like a ranged unit and this guy's like a close combat unit. Uh, you can also upgrade your units if you click on chips in here. Um, you can collect chips during the battle and apply them to give your uh, robots different uh, boosts. So like hit points or um, attack things like that <clears throat> and you basically add these into this little zone up here and it's like Tetris and that they're different shapes and you have to kind of fit them in uh, as best you can uh, to get the most out of uh, the most upgrades that you can get uh, so down the bottom here you've got filters so you can actually just look at your attack um, chips or your defense chips or whatever that is um, different filters anyway. Uh, then down here you can filter by the shape. So say you've got um, a little gap left you could, that you wanted to fill, you could just maybe show this shape and that would uh, make it easier to find <coughs> a shape that will fit in there or a chip. Okay so that is basically what this is, the upgrade or enhancement zone for your units. If you go back there's uh, the lab and this is where you create new robots um, or upgrade existing ones as well so basically it looks like um, now I've only, I've only briefly touched on this but um, it looks like uh, by default the robots start out made of iron and you can upgrade them or make them out of different metals like silver and gold and different things like that to make them more powerful I would imagine um, so I've got one blueprint here. Now how this works is a bit, I'm not a fan of this, basically you have to guess how to build the robot. So it shows you this robot but it doesn't tell you how to actually construct it. So you just have to click clicking on things um, and adding them in and then click build when this flashes. And I don't know, it just seems a bit, I don't, I'm not a fan of that method anyway. Um, it's kind of guesswork and trial and error but uh, basically that's how you uh, will create new robots. I actually did it for the other one, the wrench guy, I just clicked on a load of stuff and then I clicked build and I built them and it's kind of like I've no idea how that just was but it, it, it did it anyway and um, so that's how to craft it. You can also upgrade robots so you can click on um, one of your existing guys and I imagine because he's built out of iron if you have any silver parts you can upgrade them with silver parts again I'm not sure exactly how that works um, if it's it's possible it's probably more straightforward than the craft and it probably just looks like zero of two so you probably need two silver of these and three silver of these to make them or if you have a different material so that might be a bit more straightforward um, but that's basically the crafting and the upgrading I don't know if you collect blueprints um, but it kind of makes me wonder, is there any point collecting blueprints if you're just randomly doing it anyway? I'm not sure. Um, but that's basically how you get new robots. So let's go back to the main menu. Um, on the left hand side, as I said, the game also. For this, um, I'm just going to do um, an Infinity Mine mission. Um, because the campaign is going to be more involved and it's going to be more talking and stuff like that. And so I'm just going to show you a battle in Infinity Mine. And this looks like it's a hundred, as far as I can tell, there's like a hundred different missions in here. 
and I have cleared the first one and I'm on B2 so let's click on B2 this is where you select the robots that you want to bring into the battle as far as I can tell um, it doesn't say that but I think that's what this is so if you had a lot of robots I'm not sure what the maximum amount you could bring is but um, it's like some sort of preload out kind of selection before you go into battle. Now I haven't used this guy so I'm not sure what he's going to be like so let's go for it and see what happens okay so there's kind of um dialogue between your character and other characters in the game so let's just see what this uh, girl Rhea has to say for herself head up boss the malfunctioning robots are coming okay short and sweet <laughs> alrighty so eliminate your enemy uh, that's how we win and defeat is if your team is wiped out and uh, we've got a time limit of 25,000 got it okay so here we go now this is the the main uh, battle so you can move the screen around the usual ways you can left click and drag or you can move to the edge oops I just moved my guy by accident um, so this is the enemy down here that we want to be attacking in this mode I think it's just a wave of enemies just spawn and you have to kill them all so it's fairly straightforward and um, in other modes you have to capture tactical points on the map and stuff like that but uh, just to give you an idea how the battles play out, anyway, this uh, should do the job. So this guy is Jewel Claw, he's called, and he's a close combat guy. So let's move him up. And he can only attack um, in these red squares. Now you've also got special abilities down here. Um, and to use them, first of all you have to activate them with this plus sign. So you choose the one you want, and you can also upgrade them. Um, as you level up in the battle. Uh, so I'm going to upgrade this one because I find this one's quite useful uh, for double attacks. It makes them quite strong. Um, we can't do anything else with this guy, so you got to click the end unit. Uh, sorry, the end unit turn. And how this plays out is each unit on the map takes their go. And it's not team and then team, it's basically it can vary. So if you click on this up here, it shows the order that each unit on the map will take its go and these are kind of like um, values time values beneath it uh, it corresponds as well if you look up here I think with this how much time is in the actual battle so you don't need to worry too much about it just the fact that uh, this is the order that the next unit is gonna uh, play so after I take my turn it looks like the enemy guy will take his turn so we'll get rid of that, we don't need to worry too much about it. And if you click this button to end the turn, it'll go to the enemy guy. So he looks like a ranged unit. So this guy, I do not know, he looks like a repair bot. So let's move him, let's see what he's got here. He raises a repair tower above his head, emitting a repair wave to nearby allies, allies and healing them for a few turns. So he's a good healer guy. Emits an invisible wave, making nearby alley, allies, what do you saying, allies, uh, invisible for a new few turns. Let's go to the repair thing. So we'll click it. We're not going to use it yet because we, we took very little damage there. So we're just going to move our guy up a little bit. And next is this guy. Um, I'm not a fan of the, um, the selection icon. I like the green circle beneath them, but this big huge diamond thing on top of them is kind of a intrusive and blocks quite a bit of what's going on. I don't think it's really needed but um, it's there anyway so we can still move but I don't want to move them anymore so I'm gonna click end unit turn and this is our ranged guy. Now if we can get him up onto high ground we can rain down fire on the enemy and be um, better defended so Let's see, let's move him here for now. And that puts us in range for an attack. So we can just click on him to attack um, without moving anymore. Because if I move him forward, I don't, I don't want him to take uh, any unnecessary hits. So let's go for it. Yeah, that's a nice bit of damage. 
Whoa, that guy moves. Okay, so now we've got an Amara media threat here now. So, I've got my double claw attack and I'm going to use it on him. We don't have to move, but once you attack, I think that cancels out your move. So, let's just attack this guy. Oh, I did the wrong thing. I think I just did a single attack on him. I don't think I used the double attack on him. I'm not sure. Anyway. Now, this guy is damaged, so I'm going to activate this repair tower. And that should repair anybody in this area. So... I'll keep them in good shape, hopefully. Now, our ranged guy, I'm going to move him up onto this tile, because it's a bit higher. Although that puts him outside the repair range, but if I can get up there, that would be ideal. So, who do we attack? Now, oh yeah, if you hover over the unit, it'll give you their stats as well. So, let me see, damage is 35. And he has... 35 hit points. So, I think we should be able to kill him with one shot. Um, unless there's other factors there that will stop that from happening. So let's see what happens anyway. Yep, I took him out. Now when you kill enemies as well, um, they drop these uh, upgrade um, cubes. And they can contain uh, uh, parts and stuff like that that you can upgrade your robot with after the battle. Okay, so how are we doing here? It's, let's, I don't think I used this the last time, so you click on it, and then you click on it, the enemy. There we go, that's a double attack now. Double hits is pretty good. I like that, I like that attack mode. Now, our repair guy is doing a good job, but let's move him onto this tile to collect this thing here. Now, it'll only collect when you end his turn, so, end you in a turn. That was a cheeky attack. So the AI seems to be pretty good in the game. Um, but you know, so far I've I've seen it's done a good job at attacking me. Um, now I'm using my ranged guy. I need to upgrade something here. Let's upgrade this. Boosting the speed. I think when your speed is boosted, it means your his turn comes around quicker. So I'm gonna activate that. And who are we going to attack, though? I'm going to have to attack the guy on the ground, I think. Now... Let me see. I can't get over to him. But I'm going to move ahead anyway. Now we can upgrade. Um, this will... This upgrade will... Let's see... Dual Claw drives his claw deep inside the enemy's body, dealing magic damage and healing himself. So it's a pretty good attack. So let's let's go with that. Can't do anything else with him for this go. So we'll end his turn. And we've got our repair guy. So we'll move him. Let's pick up this. And let's activate our repair again. So that should repair that guy who just took damage. Yeah, so it's a pretty good game. It's um it's it's got good um good involved tactical gameplay going on. Um lots of nice um things that you can do with special abilities and stuff like that. Um so let's see what we're gonna do next. Well let's attack this guy again. I don't want to upgrade anything there yet. Well, we can upgrade this, because that's actually a good um, escape uh, special. So I'm going to upgrade that as well. So that We can choose that if we want, but I don't want to use that now. I'm going to attack this guy instead. For the moment. That's him down. Now, as well, if your character 
gets destroyed. It actually, um, I don't know if it does in this game mode, but in the other game mode, it's playing it respawn. So if you hover over it, it says durability 2 of 2. So that means it can be destroyed twice, I think. Um, or once, maybe, and then it comes back. But um, let's try not to get destroyed anyway. So these green bars, by the way, they're your energy. So this guy you can see has got a bit of energy damage. Right, who are we using? Jewel, Jewel Claw. Okay, it's very hard to get up with this guy. I don't know. How, I'm going to have to move. I can't move him. Okay, let's just go collect this thing. Uh, there's nothing more we can do. So, end his turn. Okay, the real battle begins. All units enable their last skill. So, I think that's just because the skill upgrades here have reached a point where they're all maxed out, I think. Okay, so what's this do? Protection field. Grants protection field to an ally to soak up damage. Well, that sounds good. So, I'm going to ac activate this. And I'm going to click on him. Now, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna focus on attacking this guy because this guy's beside him. So, big ball shoots a big cannonball towards an enemy, dealing massive damage and knocking the tire back. Cannoneers also push back. Well, that sounds good. So let's let's give this a go because I'd I'd like to be knocked back away from this fella. So fire. Boom. Oh, I think I just blew him off the map. <laughs> that worked out pretty good. So, another one of these guys. Now, I don't think there's any way of telling how many guys, how many enemies there are um, in this particular um, mission. But, we just gotta keep it attacking them until they go. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, have an, um, not worry about this because we need to really attack these fellas. So I'm going to bring this guy back over to here. I can't do my double attack. What else have we got? Extend the claw. Fires his hand at the enemy's body, which sticks aside, then unleashes electricity to stun his enemy and deal damage. Well, that might be good. Stun. I think I'm just going to go to standard attack, to be honest. Okay, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm on lower ground, I think. Our repair guy is doing a good job, though. <clears throat> and he upgraded. So, if I upgrade this, it will increase the health regen. Yep, that sounds good to me. Can he attack? Let me see if I move him here. Ah, he's got a... Where's his damage? 25. Yeah, let's just go for an attack for now. Boom. More bad guys. This is not looking good. So, yeah, you can zoom in with the mouse wheel as well. So, zoom in, zoom out to a certain degree. Get close up to the action for a little bit. Okay, so here we get on the range guy. Okay, let's back him up here. And fire at... That's where the guy is lowest down, I think. What's this do again? Hmm. Okay, let's activate this. And um, we're gonna fire this guy. Oh, nice one. Wasn't expecting to kill him one shot. And we get a second shot because of that overdrive thing, I think. Oh no, sorry, it's this guy now. Uh, the double claw attack should do some nice damage. Boom. Okay, repair guy. Your job is to pick up this bonus. And end move. Uh, we've got ranged attacks again, so let's just focus on this fella. Wow, this guy is very powerful. I didn't realize. What's his damage? 80. Very nice. Okay, let's move up. Collect this part while we're at it. 
This could be the last guy now. So, let's just push forward. He's pretty weak. At a range. We cannot activate anything. I'm just wondering if this cooldown affects all the specials. I'm wondering why these are actually grayed out. Or maybe there's a maximum amount of times you can use them. I'm not sure. Okay, let's just skip. Oh no, I think the reasons are grayed out is because they're out of range actually. So if you, if you hover over the item, it shows you on the game map the squares, the yellow, orangey squares where it will can be used. And this one has a bigger range, but um, he's out range, so that's why they're grayed out. So end unit turn. Repair guy. Let's just get stuck in repair guy. What's his name? Wrenchy. This guy's history. Now, just go with a standard attack on him. Thirty hit points left, and a ranged guy. Let's move him up here. This guy's very—he he should just kill him, I'd say. Boom. Dante was right. There's something wrong with the mine. We should hurry up. Victory, one thousand gold. Actually, I'm not sure what you use the gold for. Oh, that could be. Hang on, let's just see what this. No part gain, salvage. So, you get some... Well, we only got one item. At the end of the battle, and some experience. Okay, so that's um, a good look at how the battles play out. Level up, gained 500 gold, gained 5 new normal chips, and gained 1 mini Zero D's blueprint. Great, indeed. So let's quickly go back to the menu and check out the lab. So I've got this new uh, blueprint, so again, to build that, it's a matter of guessing, you know, how to do it. So I just click, stuff, nothing happening, so can't do anything. Um, so, yeah. I'm not sure what that guy does. But anyway. So yeah, so that's um, that's pretty much the game, Groundbreakers. It's a good, uh, it's it's good fun. It's, it's um... The, tac the battles themselves are, are enjoyable. Um, I haven't played the campaign, so I'm not sure um, how involved that is. There might be an extra element of strategy to that. Um, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Um, if you'd like me to cover that, maybe just leave a comment in it below. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, don't forget to leave a like as well. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.